Hey folks, welcome back to our video on shared components and social icons. Let's just take a look at our example site and we can see what those social icons are. That's these guys right here. Just a side note, not all templates are going to include them. We may have turned them off through the style sheet. It depends on the aesthetics of the product and, and whatnot, but of all the components that we include, we do include the social icons and all the packages. We may not display them though. It really depends on sort of, like I said, the aesthetics of the product and what sort of design look we're trying to go after. And not all designs may prompt or, or really call for having social networking icons up at the top because we may have them down at the bottom like we do here as this example as well. So in case you don't have any, you can turn them on. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. We go to our editor and we go to our site, our styles, and our styles.css. Let's just scroll down the page. And we're looking for the, what we're actually looking for is the header component region. And in there are all the different shared library items. And we may have more or less than what we're showing here in the video. But what we're looking for is the social icons. And if they are turned off in your site, you will see a visibility hidden display none added to the social icon properties. And what you just do is just sort of select it and get rid of the visibility hidden, get rid of the display none, and then they'll show up in the page. You will need to position the top and the left or right positioning in order to get them to sh display wherever you want them to display, but that's just a matter of preference from this point on. You can put them wherever you want within the header of the page. Okay, now with that said, really, what what are the social icons? Can you change them? What can you do with them? Well, I can tell you what. We can remove the ones we don't want. We can replace existing icons. So we can reduce the total number. We can replace the existing icons with new icons. We, we include in your package 160 different uh, icons from about 52 different social networking sites because we include three different sizes for each icon, large, medium, and small. Um, and as sites grow all the time and new media outlets pop up, they'll provide their own icons. You can download them from those websites and drop them into your, your own website and apply them to the social uh, networking or social icons page. Um, but we can remove, we can replace, and we can even add to this. So I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of each. Uh, let me just show you where you can figure out which icons are included, though. Um, open up the site folder the icons folder and the icon examples page just open that up and right here it tells you everything that's included shows you the actual icon and what uh, social networking or social media service they're involved with uh, Twitter's an obvious one Vimeo uh, Windows so there's all sorts of different things in here you can see each one has three different sizes okay now for your I'm going to close this one down here and go to the uh, shared library, shared library, shared and social icons page. Uh, first of all, removing an icon. Very simple. Select the one you don't want. For example, Google Plus. Click on it. You'll see the image tag and the quick tag selector. If you don't see the quick tag selector up here, go to the view and make sure the quick tag selector is turned on. Okay. So you select an image, image tag, a tag. Okay. So make sure you go image and then the A tag beside it, then press delete on the keyboard, just like that. Okay, I'm just going to undo that. You can replace an icon. If you want to keep the five, but you don't want the same five, you can replace one. Here's the sequence to do that. Uh, select the icon you want replaced. For example, the Google Plus. Double click it to open up the picture properties. Click the browse button and let's just Usually you'll go to this folder here to start with. Go to your site folder, your icons folder, your images folder, then select the icon you want. Now it's good to know ahead of time which size icons you're using. Um, when you click on the, before you click on the browse button, you can sort of scooch over a little bit and it'll tell you that it's a Google Plus dash M. So when I go to the folder here, if I'm looking, let's say I want to do an Android app, um, I see there's the let me give you a little bit of room so we can put them all in one line. We have the android.png, android-m, android-s. So m is for medium, s is for small. Google, we use the medium, so we'll use a medium one here as well. Click on open and OK. Now, before you continue, when you use the picture properties to replace an image in a page, you have to double click to go back into it. 
go to the Appearance tab and deselect the Specify Size. Why? Because now we're enabled for mobile devices. So as a mobile device is resized and whatnot, the icons will resize accordingly and fit nicely into the page. That's how to replace an image or an icon. After that, just changing the link is very simple. You just double click on each of the icons, find the hyperlink location and add the address for your Facebook page right down there and make sure it's an absolute URL uh, in terms of HTTP, da -da -da, Facebook. Now, many of you will say, well, I don't want people just leaving my website and going to my Facebook page. I want, them to, I want the page to open in a new window so that when they close the Facebook page down, my website's still there. Well, that's where you edit the target frame. You click the little pencil icon -y thing here, select New Page, and OK. So that opens up your Facebook page using a new browser window. So when your visitor is done with your Facebook page and close it down, your web page is still sitting in the background and they can go back and browse your, finish browsing your site. Okay. Now, finally, what about adding an icon? I'm just going to do a control Z. I'm just going to put everything back to the way it was. Now to add an icon, I'm going to suggest you do this. First of all, switch to code view. Copy an existing line of code. And let me see if we can get this in the entire window here. To copy in a line of code for an existing icon, we simply select the entire line like so by clicking on the number beside it. We do a control C on our keyboard to copy it. We put the cursor below and a control V to paste. So basically copy and paste an existing icon. Then we're going to go back to the design view. Then we're going to double click. Then we're going to use the browse, find a new icon, click OK. And we're going to go back in and do the appearance and OK. And then we're going to go and update the address Okay, and one thing I should have mentioned there is the alt text. Probably a good idea for accessibility to update the alt text for each icon as well. You can do it through code view by changing the alt right here. I'm just going to put that back to the way it was there. And or you can just double click and change it right here under the alt text window. That way, when it's updated and viewed in a page, viewed in a page, I should say, uh, let's just go to our web page here. All right? If a screen reader is reading the content of the page and it comes up to these icons, uh, what it'll do, because it's an image and not text, it's going to read the alt text and say Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, and Tumblr. And it'll tell the folks who are listening to the screen reader what those icons are for.